so bleary. I guess I'm young, but I feel so weary. For a few days every year, the capital of Texas becomes the capital of music. As thousands of musicians take over Austin. What's up? We're just the kid. We're from Chicago, Illinois. Los Angeles, California. Midnight Theory. They come from all over the country and all over the world. and turn Austin into a musical mecca. For South by Southwest, what will become the world's most influential music festival. For four days and nights, music seems to pour out of every pore of this city, from front porches, parking lots, and more than 80 bars and clubs. South by Southwest attracts the unknown, the up and coming, and established stars like Jacob Dylan. I feel something really cool here each time I've been here. Every year, nearly 2,000 acts compete for the industry's attention, hoping to catch a break, build some buzz, or land a record deal. Along 6th Street, Austin's main drag, Tommy Blank's group, Quiet Company, was offering free hugs. It was embarrassing at first. Did it, did it work? People love it. I mean, look, I'm talking to you right now. Right? So. <laughs> it's a road some veterans know well. We had no label. We were booking ourselves. I was in charge of advancing the shows. And, <laughs> and we would get to our gigs in a pink RV. So we'd load up the pink RV and come down to South by Southwest. So I think we had one showcase. Sisters Marty McGuire and Emily Robeson are two-thirds of the Dixie Chicks. When you came to South by Southwest that first time, did you feel like you got noticed? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. Maybe you laughed at yeah, no, We have to remember we were in probably fringe skirts and cowgirl outfits. We were very kitschy, so I don't know that it was, it should have been. <laughs> With their lead singer, Natalie Maines, taking a break, McGuire and Robeson were back at the festival this year, performing as the Courtyard Hounds. Cold Chicago night. Is it difficult putting yourself out there again in a new form? Proving ourselves all over again, yeah. I think there's a little bit of pressure. Motown legend Smokey Robinson was trying out something new, too. Promoting a new album on his own new label. So you're in charge of what exactly? Uh, you name it. <laughs> Even the great soul singer has had to adapt to the decline of CD sales and the digital world. I mean, it's a new business, isn't it? It sure is. It's a whole nother new business. The record business is a whole nother animal now. And what do you think of it? It's frightening. What frightens you? Uh, the fact that I think that uh, it's almost like we're going back to the days of the minstrel where you just do music and nobody pays for it. A lot has changed since Roland Swenson co-founded South by Southwest 24 years ago. At some point did you say to yourself, oh my God, what have I done here? Yeah, uh, every day, yeah. It just it sort of took on its own life and, and you know, I'm, I'm just its, its humble servant. <laughs> Swenson, a former band manager and journalist, presides over the sprawling operation from a little office called Director's Hell in the back of Austin's convention center. If there's a problem, it's his job to put out the fire. We don't like to use the word fire. <laughs> because back in 1991, someone did set fire to the festival's headquarters. A lieutenant in the fire department comes up and he's got like smudge on his face. And he looks me in the eye and says, do you have any enemies? <laughs> Plenty, and uh, Swenson uh, knows maybe. it. 10,000 acts applied to be in the festival this year. Fewer than 2,000 made the cut. The old cliche, if you're gonna make an omelet, you gotta break some eggs. We break a lot of eggs. Speaking of food, Rachel Ray is a regular at South by Southwest. I just wanna thank everybody for coming out today. The celebrity chef and music lover fell in love with the festival 
and now throws a free annual barbecue that's become one of the festival's hottest tickets. I wanted it to be like a really cool block party. Good food, uh, good drink, and great music. So how many people are you feeding? Uh, we're prepared to feed up to 2,500. Uh -huh. And I try and write my best food of the year for it. I mean, I really work <laughs> on the recipes. Oh, this this pulled pork I made, it's, it's sick. It's a citrus braised pulled pork with pickled onions and queso fresco on it. So good! Foreigners have learned they have to fly the flag here if they want to be on the musical map. The British even opened an embassy in an Austin bar. The band Efterklang did not have an embassy to go to. We're from Denmark. But Kasper Clausen and his bandmates from Copenhagen were making a return trip. I mean, if you want to sort of introduce yourself to the world, you need to come here. I think at some point there's a lot of festivals, like, but not as big as this. Their appearance here last year led to a record deal. So it worked out. It worked. <laughs> so it was worth the trip? Yeah. I wanted a guitar shaped like the state of Texas. I thought it was a no-brainer. The most unlikely guest at South by Southwest may have been Dennis Hensel. I'm an accountant by day. <laughs> What are you doing here? Who we found strolling 6th Street around midnight with a Texas-shaped guitar. You're trying to sell guitars. I'm trying to sell guitars. It's heavy and it's expensive. Okay. Hensel has invested $600 to design and build this prototype. Everyone seemed to want to try on. Hopefully I'm generating some buzz or something. I don't know. I'm, like I said, I'm losing my shorts, but I am having a ball. My eyes are... So bleary, I guess I'm young, but I feel so weary. For artists, even accountants, at South by Southwest, this is a street of Texas-sized dreams.